In this tutorial video, we'll be taking a look at the American Football Session Template. This is a temporary tutorial video. We have not completed adding the roster features to the teams. So once that's done, we will do a more formal uh, training tutorial video uh, for the football uh, session template as well as our other session templates. So this one's a little off the cuff, unscripted. We just want to get it done so that we can release the product and you guys have uh, some idea of how to use the software. So as you can see right now, I've already opened up a session and I've entered some information. I'm on the team details tab is when you create a new session. Uh, that's where you are defaulted to so you can enter your team information. Um, all of this data that I put in uh, is, is optional. Really, you need... Um, at the very least, you need a full team name, a short team name. Um, mascot is helpful, but not necessary. Um, color is more or less necessary. And a, a logo, not necessary, but uh, extremely helpful. All of the other information like rankings and records and things like that, that's really all optional information. And it really just depends on how deep you want to go down into uh, what all uh, data fields we offer. So I've, I've entered all of this information already. Um, I've also input a whole bunch of match details. Um, I have not imported any sponsors or marquees, so I'm going to do that right now. And we'll go to marquees, import that. And then we'll go to our sponsors folder and import that. Okay, now I'm going to also load the graphics package for football. Uh, remember, if you're using the NDI um, feed for your uh, getting your graphics into your production system, um, you'll pick from the graphics projects that we have. But if you're using um, an external character generator, uh, with your production system or just one that allows you to do, bring in external data, you're going to want to come over here to the external CG settings and controls. And then you are going to, uh, we have kind of a, a walkthrough of what these different options are. Uh, if you want an XML or CSV file, um, you would pick that and you can save it to the local drive, to a network drive, or share a folder on a network and point your program to that shared folder. Um, that Sweet CG automatically creates. Um, while I'm talking about that, um, I'll come over here for the counter images for timeouts left. As you adjust timeouts, the counter images for those uh, can be found here. They come preloaded. You can change them out. For more information on what what these two tabs here, counter images and toggle images, on what all that includes, um, watch our um, complete tutorial video series on sessions and templates, and we go through that in quite a bit more detail. Um, over here for toggle images, then you can see we have some images for uh, ball possession, uh, flag on the play, touchdown, things like that. And all of that is, um, if you provide your own images, you can use those, uh, import them. Uh, you just need a blank version and then a a, a real one that actually shows the animation uh, or the, the toggle image um, when the toggle is true. And all of the different keys that you'll want for that are found under here. So you can, uh, here's the key and here's the current value for it. So uh, with that in mind, uh, we'll get back to um, the built-in graphics. I'm going to come over here to um, the game status tab, I'm going to get, actually, I'm going to, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to change that, get these two guys going. All right, so every sport will have a different user interface. Um, right now, um, our soccer um, football template is our generic uh, interface because we haven't had a time, had an opportunity to put in um, a real interface for it, but you'll see like baseball and basketball, they have user interfaces that are uniquely designed for those sports. And football is no exception. In football's 
quite a bit more complicated um, and involved just because it is like the most uh, complicated sport on the face of the earth. So what we have here, we have these different panels. Um, we can see the score, timeouts left, the team names here, and then you'll see these team, team names and all these buttons. So when you go in and you change um, these fields here, you will see all of these buttons that reference those short form of the names um, change. So uh, right now, uh, state has possession of the ball. If I click that button, you'll get prompted here. And it, just as a reminder, this action will change the ball possession, set first and 10, but will not credit the team with a new first down. If you do not want to keep getting prompted for that, uh, well, first of all, then you can see those two tabs, those two panels change here. So now that the tech has the ball, they have all the scoring options. You'll see that both teams also have the safeties. Um, I know what you're thinking. There's no such thing as a one-point safety. There actually is. It's extremely rare. We put it there just so um, you don't have to worry about it in case your uh, team you're covering happens to be one of those rare instances. So now, uh, changing the possession here, if you don't like getting prompted with this, uh, again, in our tutorial series on sessions and templates, we go into the session editor in quite a bit more detail. But I'm going to come over here and just show you how to do this. Um, you want to come over here to change of possession. And then you can see require confirmation. You can set that to false. So I'm going to change that. And now we can go back and forth here without getting prompted. Since there's no first, there's no first down granted on change of possession. Um, that's why we put that there. Um, and just in case you accidentally click it, uh, you don't want to screw something up. But if you don't like it there, you can disable it. Okay. So as you can see again, as I change these toggles, the um, different buttons become revealed for each team based on who has possession of the ball. Um, timeouts here uh, for both teams. If you take a timeout, you will see the timeout. Oh, I forgot to activate the score bug. Let's do that. We'll do that again. It'll take two timeouts. As I do that, you'll see a little timeout animation over here. And then now the team has taken two of their three timeouts, so they only have one left. That wasn't smart of them. OK. So um, also with the ball possession, you'll see this little triangular element there that's going to change sides when the ball changes position. OK. So all of these different scoring elements, uh, we can click here, and it will grant uh, the plus 6 on a touchdown, and it animates home team touchdown. So where's home team coming from? That's actually coming from right here. So we, should, we could put Tech University. Let's give them a touchdown. Tech University touchdown, and then there's lo their logo and their team colors. Okay, and then uh, oh, and then they get one after the touchdown. Oh, it's good. Uh, but let's say they got a two-point conversion. And they get the two-point conversion. If they get a field goal, then they also it's the same animation as going after touchdown. The the safeties do not um, play any animation. Um, they simply increment the score. Uh, all right, we'll get to the field goal in a second here because there's a couple other things I want to talk to you about that. Um, total yards here. Um, this is kind of an optional piece. Um, what what you'll probably find is unless you have like a really good operator, um, you know you you may not even use this, and it, maybe it's something that you just want to show at halftime after you get some stats from the press box or something like that. But 
um, we don't have a means at the moment to tabulate, uh, track the yards based on how many yards were gained on a down and things like that. So if you're going to add to the to the yards, you have to click this every time and add however many yards they gained. And then down here in this line score and other adjustments, you can see the number of first downs and the total yards uh, for the teams, as well as the line score uh, up first quarter through triple overtime. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, first downs, or in general, down in distance. So if I click, uh, for, like I said, when there's a ball uh, change of possession, there's no first down granted. Um, but now they've got the ball, they get a first down, you would click first down. That will set the down in distance to 1 in 10, and it will also grant them a first down. So don't go clicking through here. Like the more you click this, like it takes. You, know, you don't only need to click it once, because now look, they've got eight first downs, and now their stats are really screwed up. But if you do do that, you can come over here to counter corrections, and we have this is kind of like a like looking under the hood of your car to kind of see the different counters that that make up all of the the uh, the inner workings of uh, the program. And then you can manually um, decrease the uh, the stat there. So now, if there's uh, a first and goal, then you would click first and goal, and then you can see it increments uh, the first downs. It's set at first and goal. I want to show you how we get that. So the way our football system works is when the distance counter is negative one, it will um, say goal. I'm gonna show you a, a little bit more about uh, where we get this phrasing of goal in just a minute. I wanna talk to you a little bit more about the, uh, the down and distance here. So now our next down would be second. And if it's inches, we give you a little here that it's zero. You want to enter zero. So we click second and. Now we're being told what the new distance is. So uh, in this case, um, it would, let's say it's second and eight. Then we would enter eight here. And now we can see right here it says second and eight. Now this button has changed to third and. And then this button has become active so that we can go back down to first. This is in case you accidentally click this button. So you can easily go back. So now we'll do fourth and, and they uh, they gained a couple of more yards there. Now it's fourth and three. Now on this play, and then you can see now we're at fourth, fourth and, and then second and on our decrease. Now on this, um, we're going to enter zero because now they're at fourth and inches, and now you can see there it says fourth and inches. Now this button's grayed out because you can't go up above that. So for those of you who are interested in changing wording here um, if into a different language, or you don't like the and, you want an ampersand or something like that, then you can come up here to session and come over to the session editor. Now, the big thing that each sport has is context values. And Football, American football has the most context values because again, it's ridiculously complicated. So uh, if we scroll down here to down and distance language, this is where we're providing all of the um, customization for phrasing. So I'm going to change all, all of the ampersand. And then um, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the line of scrimmage language the same for now. So um, I won't come back and show you more of these. I'll just show them to you right now. So um, so you can change if if the distance is uh, zero, that's going to be what we have for inches. And if it's the distance is goal, then it needs this is negative one. So whatever you want these values to read on your outputs um, in your gra in your uh, score bug, then you change the the phrasing right there. And then you can do the same for the different phrasing for the ball spot, um, for midfield, and then yard attempt, as well as the safeties. All right. 
So now that I've done that, now you can see it says fourth in inches, but the ampersand is there. Okay. Um, let's talk about, I'm going to come over here to the score bug real briefly. Uh, we have got more to talk about over here, but uh, we'll come over here. Now, you can see on the score bug, it, um, we have the all the typical stuff that you'd see. But now over here we have sweetcg.com. That is coming from the Match Details uh, company website right there. Um, and you can put anything you want there. You could leave it blank and just have a blank box there. But um, to show the down and distance, you would click over here in the graphics controls, down and distance. And now you'll see that's red uh, because we're actually in the red zone at the moment. Um, so let me pull that over here. We'll get to this in just a minute. Um, so down in distance, fourth in inches, and then it's on the state 42. So um, show you more about that in a minute here. If we right click on this button, we can use down in distance as the resting state. So then it will always show that. And then if we click this button, then it will just animate to the ball spot. So this is really. Uh, the, the reason we have these controls here is, um, those options is, um, for those of you who have a dedicated operator, and they can be doing all of this and they can keep up with it, um, great. You have all of the options and bells and whistles that you could possibly want. But if you're a one-man one -man band or your audio guy is also running graphics and they, you just can't be doing everything, then we offer these different solutions uh, so that you can scale back. Um, and um, you know maybe you just leave this down in distance as the resting state and you never show the ball, ball spot and because you just don't have time to be uh, updating that. Um, and then if you're just at the point where, you know what, I can't even do that. Um, I'm just going to come over here and leave the website up. And then we won't even worry about down in distance or ball spot. You can do that too. That's fine. Uh, we don't want to uh, lock you into having to do it one way and require you to get more people. But understand, if you want to do more, you are going to need another person, uh, someone dedicated to do all of this. Uh, okay, let's uh, come over here to the ball spot and talk about that. Um, the ball spot works. Um, we, we have some refinement we want to do to this, um, but this is what we've got for the time being, where uh, we have this slider bar that represents the field. And then over here, we have a readout of where the ball spot is. So right now, it's on the state 25. Now, let's say when the a quarter changes and the teams reverse uh, sides of the field. We can swap the end zones, and now, um, there we go. Um, now we can um, swap the end zone. So as we look at the field from where we are, either through a camera or if we're in a press box and looking down on the field, the end zones that we see. Uh, on the field in real life, match the end zones that we see on the uh, in the software. So uh, we can adjust the slider appropriately, and then the software does all of the math as far as uh, it should. Is it the tech side of the field, or is it the state side of the field, and the and the the um, the yardage? And then you can also click one at a time, or in jump in groups of five on the yardage. And then when we, I'm going to show the down and distance here. And then I'm going to show we're at 21. And then if we go into the 20, oh, whoops, I did that the wrong way, because we're on the, we'll do it over here. There we go. There we go. I didn't do it fast enough. There we go. So now we're in the red zone, so the the coloring changes there for you. Okay. Um, kind of being nonlinear here. I apologize. 
A couple other things we've got. So we, we have the timeouts. You can assign timeouts this way. If you're in a position where there's like a media timeout or something, you can also run a timeout just that way, clicking that button. But that's not going to decrement any uh, timeouts assigned to a team. Then we also have flags on the play that we can do. And then uh, as far as the clock, we can start and stop that. What we do have, once we get under a minute, we do have some options here. Right now, it's only going to play in full seconds. If you so desire, you can come up to the session editor and just choose to display one tenth of a second under one minute. And then when you start it, it'll start playing it like that. Now, um, I'm going to come back to the session editor to talk a little bit more about the clock settings here. And again, our sessions and tutorials video tutorial series covers a whole bunch of stuff in the session editor. So this is a little bit of repeat information. I really encourage you to watch those videos to get a full understanding of how you can customize this for your specific sport needs and come up with new sports and things like that um, and really tailor it to what you want. So each period here has a clock value. So I know in high school sports, um, you may go with like a 12 minute clock. So if you do that, you're going to want to change all of those and then you can close that. And then if you reset it, it'll reset to the, the 12. Um, and then we have these buttons here. Um, if your your guy is a little slow on on the the start or the stop, you know, once the clock's going, like, oh, he was just two seconds off, you can quick change that live and get down to, to get it synchronized as close as you can. And then under one minute, um, these change so that uh, there's a there's a 0.1 second um, uh, change option. Um, all right, come over here to the score bug. Uh, we've got all these different things on the score bug. If we right click this uh, in the same way that we right click the down and distance, um, we can choose to customize all of the defaults in the bug. So we don't want to display the ranking because it's like the first of the season and rankings really aren't relevant at that point. That's great. Uh, you know what? It's just me running the show tonight and uh, I'm super busy and I'm not feeling well. Um, so you know what? I'm not even going to worry about timeouts. I'm certainly not going to worry about the clock. And um, you know what? We don't need sponsors anyway. This is all happening on my own time and no one appreciates me or pays me. So um, we're just going to do that. And we don't want the tagline either. And you know what? We don't even want the logos. So you have options there to um, customize this in all sorts of ways, um, however you want. Um, and then if you click through, uh, most of these under the score bug tab do not have customization options. Um, but, you know, click through there and, and take a look and see what you got. Um, because we, we kind of throw in some options everywhere we everywhere we go. And then uh, a lot of these different full screens um, have options here. So, like, if you don't want to display the team records, you know, you don't have to display the team records, you know. Um, all right. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Uh, I am. I want to talk to you about um, the kick attempt. All right, so if there's a field goal attempt, um, you'll want to pay attention to the kick attempt here. In most cases, we have this little pop-up here that explains it too. Um, in most cases, you will not need to change this to from 17. The, the reason we have 17 there is not because that's how long the kick attempt is. Um, it's how far back usually the ball spot holder is behind the line of scrimmage um, for the kicker plus 10 for the uh, distance of the end zone now in canadian football the uprights are um, at the front of the end zone so in that case you would change this to seven but you know if 
if you need to change it to six because he's really six. Like, I don't know if people are watching are really going to care for that one yard. Um, I'm sure there are stat people who really care. But you just need to make the decision, like, are you going to have a spotter there making sure that they're at six yards or seven yards or eight or, you know, whatever. Um, but that's how we do that. So this, the way we calculate the kick attempt length, which we can see here, is this number plus the ball spot place placement. So if they're five yards closer, now you can see they're at uh, 30. So and as you can see, 17 plus 13 is 30. So that's how we get that. You really shouldn't need to adjust this unless your Canadian rules um, or your league has some other different weird policy. Um, and then again, the yard attempt um, can be like, if you don't want to say yard attempt, um, you can move to the session editor and change that context value. All right, adjusting to next quarters. Oh, and to show the kick attempt, you would just click kick attempt here, and then it'll show you how many, uh, what the yard attempt is. Then all these other different buttons here do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and then we also have this points per quarter. Nope, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted, although that's cool too. Um, the line score will show you um, the line score. It will also show you first downs and total yards, so keep that in mind. If you're not tr really tracking total yards, um, or you, you're not confident in your ability to keep the first downs updated, like someone's trigger happy with this button, and crediting them with all these first downs that they didn't get, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, okay, if you need to change the size of score bug, um, you can do that here. And if you want to change the position of it, you know, you can do that too. And then you can reset it to back where it was if you decide you didn't like those changes. Um, we've got the corner bug here as well. Um, that will play the sponsor carousel um, in its own separate deal. Um, or you can have it in the sponsor carousel attached to the bug. Sponsor live reads. Um, you want to select the sponsor you want, and then you click the sponsor button, and that will show their information as entered in the sponsor list here. If you want to do a, the live read, you can see the live read here. If you check this box, that's going to show the live read in this screen only. It will not go out on your NDI feed. Um, and then you can click over to your other uh, sponsors if you're going to try to fit two in. Um, and then you can just leave this checked all the time. And then when you stop showing the sponsor, the live read will go away. Furthermore, um, with the score bug, you can either just click the score bug and it will automatically take the sponsor live read out. or and this will work with all the different graphics. You can just come over to the score bug tab and say, oh, oh, we need, uh, it's it's the new first down they're playing. Let's play it right away. And that will automatically load up the score bug too. Any button inside of here will auto activate the master score bug button. And if you want to just take everything out, you've got the remove all. All right, and then the last thing, after you've made all these changes, um, you obviously don't want to be changing, like earlier I did all the down and distance with the ampersands and stuff. Those aren't changes that you are going to want to be making before every game. Um, and again, I'll, I'll reference you to that uh, Sessions and Templates tutorial video series for more details on all of this. But once you've made changes here and you like what you've got, you can come up to the Session menu and save Session as Template. and then. Uh, like if you want to, you want to keep all of this stuff. Um, maybe you don't want the visiting team because you only cover the home team and the visiting changes all the time. Um, you're probably going to want to export this too, so the timeouts left always start at three. Um, again, all those details on why you want to do that 
watch that tutorial video series. And then you can give it a name like my football template and then export it to the templates folder. And then the next time you create a new session, you'll see my, te my football template um, as in the list of templates. And then all of the stuff, the, the status of your session when you created the uh, new template will be what the new template starts out with. All right, that's all I got, guys. If you have any questions, let me know and um, play around with it. And I hope you like it well enough that you'll want to buy it. And when we get the team rosters added, which we're going to be working on next, um, we will do another tutorial that's a little more uh, formalized and less off the cuff than what you just put yourself through right now. Thanks, guys.